Hello my friends! Today we are returning with another episode of Booktube Twin Tests. I hear you all screaming! I hear you all getting so excited! <laughs> How I feel every time I start a new Booktube Twin Test episode. Hey, fancy another one? Do you want another one? I go between for booktube twin tests in this series the people, the booktubers that the most of you have said. I have a similar reading taste to, and then ones like the one or two or three of you have said because I like seeing how those kind of different booktubers do. So the next booktuber that we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, <laughs> the next booktuber that we're having on this series, I think was the next most after Kayla and Riley. Am I right in this? Hang on. Let me not lie to you. Let me not lie to you. I should have fact-checked this before I came and started filming. <laughs> yeah, this booktuber was the next most recommended to me after Kayla and Riley, with 10 people telling me we have similar reading tastes, is Gabby Reads. <laughs> so I love Gabby so much, and I have super high hopes for this because I feel like we have very similar reading tastes. Gabby reads a lot of, like, thrillers, so I really feel like we're going to tap into, like, my thriller mystery maybe some horror, maybe, kind of flavours, tastes in this episode. And I'm just really excited to read books that Gabby has recommended to me. I feel like we're going to do really well. So this is the leaderboard so far for the first three episodes. In order to beat Kayla, a booktuber has to get a five star, a five star, and then at least a four star. Or I suppose you could get like two 4.5s and a five or something like that, but I don't give out 4.5s that often, so it's more likely to be a 5 star, 5 star and a 4 star. So let's just watch the video that Gabby sent over to me together <laughs> and see what we're going to be reading in this vlog because I am I'm so excited. I really, I really am just like so excited to read what, what Gabby recommends. Meg, what's hey. up? How's it going? Good, um, First of all, I just wanted to say thank you so much for even you know, asking me to do this for you. I think this series on your channel is so much fun and I just adore you and your videos so much. So this Gabby. is so exciting. I was so stressed out thinking of which books to pick for you because I know we have pretty similar mm -hmm. tastes when it comes yes. to thrillers and there's just so yeah. many things that I was I trying to choices. think like, what could you read for this video? And I came up with oh three books that I think are pretty fun and most of them kind of have like a mystery thriller vibe going Listen, on with she them. Knows me. So the first book that I wanted to recommend to you is one that I saw saw on your want to read shelf and I've been trying to push this book on literally everyone lately because oh. I read it in December and I'm freaking obsessed with it and that's a history of wild places um this book is just so freaking excited. phenomenal and I think something that's fun about this book is that it not only has the like magical realism aspects magical. to it but it also has a really good mystery oh at the heart of this story and we're kind of following this group of people who like live out in the forest and they have this like very different belief about life and things and it's just very very oh, interesting so it made it into my top 10 favorites oh. of last year because it's just so freaking good some of the best writing too like the writing is just really like haunting Ooh, and atmospheric and I gorgeous and I was just really invested in like the lives of these characters and the mystery that was going on and the plot twist. Dude, the plot twist. It's so <laughs> good. Oh my gosh. So I highly I'm recommend so this one. I think, I hope you'll enjoy it. So and then another book I I that will. I wanted to recommend so that I also that saw on your want to read shelf oh on God. Goodreads <laughs> is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Oh Finney. my God. This one, I'm recommending it to you because this one ended up being one of my top favorite thrillers of last year. And... <laughs> I don't know if you've read Alice I haven't, before or ever, not. I haven't checked ever. out on your Goodreads, but if you have, I'm curious what you rated them because this one's actually my favorite from I've Alice never read so Alice far. Feeney. She's always kind of I've been like a hit miss to. author for me, but this one was just <gasps> freaking oh God, amazing. It, it has really great like spooky vibes, you know, like cause this couple's going to this chapel mm -hmm. that's like out in the middle of nowhere in this like snowy ambiance. <laughs> And the chapel may or may not be, like, haunted. Like, there's just, like, weird stuff happening at the chapel. And they're like, what the heck? And it's just really atmospheric. And there's some damn good plot twist at the end of this book. <laughs> like, dude, your mind is going to be blown. You're going to be, you're just going to be blown away. I just did not expect anything that was happening at the end of this book. And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm, I'm so, so excited, excited for you Gabby to read this. Like I hope you love it. Okay. And then the third and final book 
I'm recommending to you. I don't know if you have this one on your red shelf and I actually forgot to check if you've read this one or not, but I'm recommending this one to you because I saw on your favorites shelf yes. you had The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware, which great First taste. Thriller, this is also one of my top favorite, favorite thrillers of all time. Like I'm obsessed with so this good. book. So because you love The Turn of the Key, I think you might also like The Nesting by CJ Cook. And this is one that I'm kind of nervous to recommend to you because I feel like anytime I've recommended this book in the past, people seem to have either loved it or hated it. <gasps> risky pick! Um, but clearly, as you can That's see from risky. all my tags, I love this book so much. It's one of my favorites. I gave it five stars. It's just a really great story. About. And it has very similar vibes okay. to The Turn of the Key. I mean, I you know, we're following a nanny who's like taking care of these children and then this house like may or may not be haunted. And this one takes place in Norway. Ooh. It also has kind of like Bly Manor vibes. I don't know if you've watched The Haunted of Bly I Manor, but it has like tried to. those kind of vibes to it as well, and it's just <laughs> so freaking good. It's everything. This one can also, it, by the way, it can be described as a modern gothic thriller. That's what the genre says on the back, and I would definitely agree with that. I just think it's, I just think it's so good. So hopefully you enjoy. And so yeah, these are the picks that I have for you to read, and I'm oh so God, excited to know your thoughts. If you don't enjoy them, like no hard feelings, you know. But I do think. These could be winners for you. Maybe I'm hoping for at least one five, one star, five star. You know, that I feel awesome. it. You know. But yeah, again, thanks so <gasps> much, Meg, for asking me to be a part of this video. I really appreciate it, and I cannot wait to see the end result. And thanks, I think <gasps> you're awesome. And yeah, I'll see you around okay. book two see later. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. There's a lot to talk about. Oh my god. Okay, fun picks. It won't be a flop. I'm confident. No, the truth is, I own rock paper scissors and a history of what comes next, but I don't own the nesting. I've never heard of that. So we're gonna have to get our hands on that. Oh my God, I don't know what I'm gonna start with. I wasn't expecting these if I wanted. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting these books. I probably should have done though, but I wasn't. So I don't know what I'm gonna start with. I'll check back in with you once I've like found all the books and gotten my hands on them and stuff, but what the hell? <laughs> okay. So I'm in bed. Cause I literally, you guys, I have the worst stomach cramps known to man. If I look strange, it's cause I have a hot water bottle here underneath my hoodie. <laughs> I'm capable of talking though, just about, so. <laughs> I'm halfway through rock, paper, scissors. And, um, <laughs> I don't know if I'm liking it. If I'm honest, I don't know if I'm liking it. I realize I barely ever read like domestic thrillers about husbands and wives. I don't, I don't think, think this, this is for me. me. I, don't, I, don't I don't think, think that's, that's for me. me. I'm like looking at my thing. I unhauled my lovely wife, didn't really like that. What other thrillers have I read that are about a husband and wife? Don't mind me just adjusting my whole water bottle. <laughs> the couple next door, I liked that. But I can't think of any others. Oh, my phone's going off, I'm popular. Anyway. um. <laughs> I just, listen, it's just a husband and a wife who hate each other. And like, I almost don't have any sympathy for that. I'm like, cut the cord, cut the cord. And I, it's written in a way that makes you think they're trying to do that, but with more permanent consequences. And I'm like, well, that's not the way. Just get a, get a, get a, get a divorce. <laughs> so it's, it's not a radical concept. Clap if you've ever wanted to kill somebody. basically we're following these two characters as they go to this like isolated trip in Scotland right and it's you're flashing back and letters that she wrote to him throughout their marriage and we have both of their perspectives I tried out the audiobook by the way the guy is narrated by Richard Armitage an icon a legend but I didn't really like it so whatever they're both written in a way that makes you think they're planning to basically kill each other I don't think that's gonna be it. There's gonna be twists and turns. But like, it's really a way that they're both their perspectives are like, they end on these like cliffhangers each chapter. And it's like basically the same of them saying, <laughs> I don't understand. Like, bro, I don't like reading these people. I don't like reading them. Like, <laughs> it's just stupid. I don't know if it's just me. I don't know. I, but I'm not in, I'm not loving it. It's like a, Gabby, not, not not me being, I, I, here's the thing, I do feel mean. I mean, I will do it, but I feel mean rating book two twin test picks low. I just don't have domestic thrills for me. Is at the moment, it's like a 2.53. I said it, I said it. I don't like the music. I'm entitled to my opinion. And like, there's all this mysteriousness and twists and turns already like being laid in, but like, 
I just don't know if I like the writing. It all just feels a bit on the nose for me right now. Oh, also the husband has got face blindness. Like he can't remember faces. So like he can't remember her face. He only knows her through like sound, smell, whatever. He knows she exists, but she, he couldn't recognize her. He could walk past her in the street, etc., etc. And I, I just feel like that's gonna be exploited. I hate, I had the same problem with Survive the Night where the, the protagonist or one of the protagonists has like some kind of disorder or disability or whatever that is exploited for plot. You know what I mean? It just, it irritates me. It irritates me. It irritates me. So that's where we're at. Um, I'm just not enjoying it. So I'm going to go finish it because I have nothing better to do. I'm going to finish it this evening and then I will check in with you in the morning on what rating we're giving it and whether Gabby is going to disown me and never speak to me again because that is a high possibility. Okay. <laughs> If the wind could spread your love What if your sweetness could reach everyone There'd be no wars Okay, so I obviously wasn't planning on speaking to you again tonight But, um, you know, needs must Duty calls <laughs> Gabby Gabby, 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 Gabby Please don't hate me Please don't hate me Please don't hate me. <laughs> Two stars. <laughs> what happened? Is it all right? No, I'm not gonna cry. Okay, what happened? Maybe I'll cry. I'm I'm so sorry. I hated it. I hated it. Two stars. Two stars. From pretty much when I stopped talking to you. I mean, like, it's obvious. It's, it's, it's. I didn't predict the end few twists, but the what I would say is the biggest twist of the book. Is that a twist? Like that that was it was so obvious to me. I was dead on correct what was happening. So much so that I wasn't even just theorizing. I just read the book as if that was ha what was happening. Sometimes it did make it a bit confusing to follow what was happening in terms of people, shall we say? But like I read the book knowing that the twist was the twist. It's not a twist. In what world is that a twist? It was so obvious from the way that certain passages were written, from the way that certain characters were written, what was happening. I'm sorry. And like, here's the thing. We've had this two in a row with Survive the Night and now this, where I have predicted it. I know what's happening. And let it be known, I never know what's happening. Whew. Remember to breathe. Okay. <laughs> I never, I never, get twists in thrillers. Never. I'm dumb. Maybe I'm just getting cleverer though. Maybe the books aren't to blame for my sudden big brain energy. It's that daily wordle. I got wordle in two today, my first ever. Can we just talk? Moment of silence. Moment of silence. Moment of silence. A profound silence has entered the chat. But like, it was so obvious. It was so obvious. I hated the writing throughout. I didn't really like any of the twists. They all felt kind of cheap and obvious to me. I didn't like the characters. They felt like, like, ridiculous. Like, I know thrillers are a bit of fun, whatever, but there needs to be some element of believability to your characters, right? There needs to be a little sprinkling of it. None, nada, none of the zilch, <laughs> zilch. And I think I've realized I prefer thrillers with a bit of a bigger cast. I would say we only really, even though the names of like one, two, five characters in this book, like it's such a small cast of characters, the same problem with Survive the Night. And like, that means that your theories are very small. Do you know what I mean? Like what could be happening is very small. And it's just, it was so, Obvious throughout, I'm getting chest pains. <laughs> it's just stressing me out. I, yeah, I just really didn't like it. I don't know if I'm gonna read any more Alice Feeney. Let me know what you think if you've read this and other Alice Feeney's. If I didn't like this, am I gonna like her other stuff? I may give her next book a go just because I really like the cover and the synopsis. Or I may give his and hers a go because one of my fav auth favorite author tubers, Lindsay Puckett, rates that really highly. But this was two stars. It was two stars and I, yeah. <laughs> Boring, not yet. Boring, tomato, tomato. <laughs> oh, and just the fact that like, I, I, is it a twist? Or are we supposed to know this? Because like, it was so, 
it was a twist. It was so obvious to me that that was happening. I read, I can't emphasize you enough, I read the book as if that was what was happening. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't like, oh, that's a theory in the recesses of my mind. Like every little thing that happened, I was adding that to my evidence tally of like, yeah, that's what's happening. And in the end, I... whatever. Gabby starts us on two points. So she's not gonna overtake Kayla or Riley in this video. We know that. I'm going to sleep, but what am I gonna start tomorrow? Cause I feel like we've started on a bum note and maybe I'll love these even more. We have the nesting, which is more like gothic, thriller, horror-y kind of thing, I think. And a history of wild places. I'm gonna go with this next, I think. I have gotten more nervous about this. This was one of my most anticipated releases. And then Kayla read it and really didn't like it. So I'm very nervous, but also a lot of you have told me I'm gonna love it. But yeah, I'm gonna read this next and hopefully we'll be a bit more successful than we were with Rock, Paper, Scissors because uh, it was not for me loves not for me just not for me <laughs> i just wanted to check in because i've read the first 80 pages of history of wild places and i thought i'd check in because this is kind of where the synopsis ends it's the end of the first two parts apologies if i sound weird by the way i've had another flare-up of costochondritis which is inflamed rib cartilage i get it like every now and again and i've had it now for like i would say probably like mm, four days <laughs> And it's just like annoying me now. It's just painful to breathe basically and I never feel like I get enough breath. So talking is not the easiest thing in the world. But anyway, yeah, we're kind of up to where we got up in the synopsis now. We met Travis who can find missing people by having an item of theirs told. It's like what he does, he's trying to find this missing woman and he stumbles across pastoral. And then his perspective ends. We jump what seems to be a, three, a, 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 a few years. <laughs> And we meet Theo, Kala, and B, which is Theo, his wife, and her sister, and them living in Pastoral as people who have always lived there. It's like, it's phrased as a community. I've called it a cult before. And like, people have told me it's not a cult. And I'm like, I'm getting all the vibes of a cult. <laughs> pastoral being revealed as a cult rather than a commune. Whoa. There's like a leader called Levi and they're not allowed to leave. Although it's not that they're not allowed to leave, well they are. If you go, you're not allowed to come back because they're told a disease permeates the borders and you'll die with this rot if you leave the borders. Now it could be like magical realism -y where that is actually true or it could be just like contemporary real world stuff where like it's a cult. So I don't know what's going on here. Like that, the vibes of you can't leave spells cult to me, but I don't know, I don't know, I could be wrong. I would say, I get the sense now, I mean, Travis has gone missing, they found his car, and um, I get the sense that <laughs> we're not gonna see him again. We're not gonna hear from him again. And so I feel like it was a bit of a strange choice to have the first 40 pages be his perspective, and then suddenly that's gone. It took, it thus took me a little bit longer to get into the story. I feel like perhaps it would have worked better if those first 40 pages were kind of interspersed throughout the kind of maybe first 150 pages of the book, perhaps. I feel like that could have worked better. Like them finding his car and then us learning a little bit about him and what brought him to Pastoral. I thought maybe pacing wise that would have worked a bit better because I did, I didn't love that aspect of the beginning. And I will just say, it's just taken me a little while to get into it. Now I feel like I could get into it now, but there's just something, the writing's very beautiful. It's very lush. I would describe it as very lush, but I think beca because of that kind of half and half beginning, it took me a while to get into it. Now I am excited to read on tonight. Um, I really need to relax because this like costochondritis can stay. If a bitch wants to stay, a bitch is gonna stay. You can't get rid of me, bitch. <laughs> I've had it before where it's lasted for like a month and a half and already four days I'm like I've had enough, <laughs> I've had enough. I don't think I've ever had it for like longer than a few weeks when I've had my channel and you know it's hard to talk and film when this is going on so we want to nix it in the bud uh, there's not really a way to do it but like if I just try and chill out hopefully it may go a bit so I'm hopefully gonna get quite a good chunk of this red tonight and then I'll see you in the morning with my thoughts I'm enjoying it but I'm not loving it as much as I initially thought I would but I'm hoping now that we're into the story we're with the characters I think we're gonna stay with for the rest of the story that I may enjoy it more the lighting in here is so weird today hang on it is like simultaneously too bright and too dark in here whoa <laughs> It 
It's a mess. I am on page 200. I f- it's too late to get a bookmark, so I marked it using the end of pages. Yeah, 200 pages into the history of wild places. And I'm feeling, I'm feeling many, many different ways about this book, okay? I'm enjoying aspects of it. There's this very like fairy tale kind of writing and atmosphere to the book, which I think is very unusual in a thriller, right? You get that a lot in fantasy, but I can't think of many times I've read a thriller with this kind of atmosphere, with this kind of eeriness. I think nature is brought into the thriller so well and into the writing. Like they're obviously living in this very isolated community where they are literally just surrounded by the woods and the way that like water and the grass and the insects and like you could you really feel like not an oppressive atmosphere but this all consuming atmosphere with the nature is done really really well so i think if you're the kind of person who really loves nature who loves i think of a lot of people in my life who love nature and like who love descriptions of it in stories i think you would really like that aspect of this and like like i said there's this like fairy tale aspect nature to the story now i will say i think it's pretty fucking obvious what's happening here. oh no. This has now gone downhill. Here's the thing with thrillers and mysteries, right? There's been some thrillers and mysteries that I've loved, that I've rated highly, that have had, you know, some bad reviews, and the bad reviews always say, Oh, it was so predictable. Oh, it was so obvious. And I'm always like, in what world? Like, no, it wasn't. <laughs> like, I I'm trying to think of examples, but it's definitely happened quite a lot, where I just, like, everyone else said they realised the twist, and I'm like, I certainly didn't. I mean, who's we? <laughs> Not me. But like, I, I don't know. I think it's pretty obvious what's happening here. I've seen quite a few reviews say that they guessed the twist early on and is it even really a twist? I think it's pretty obvious what's happening and like, you know, at least like the biggest mystery what's happening. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on wrong with, I don't know what's going on with me. Perhaps we've just hit upon two thrillers that like, I, I can connect the dots, but usually I can't. <laughs> I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but I've connected them. <laughs> Usually I can't. And I think it's, it is interesting how different people, you know, we all figure out some thrillers and don't figure out others, figure out some issues and don't figure out others, which I think is interesting. But like, I think, I think we know, I think we know. It reminds me of like a version of the Year of the Witching that I'm not enjoying as much. Like anyone who told me this isn't a cult, like, they, they, I was gonna spoil something then, but like, come on, come on, like, okay, I mean, people probably don't realise they're in a cult, but uh, just some of the stuff they're doing, it's not sitting right with me, <laughs> this isn't moral. So yeah, I don't know, it's a very slow story, it's a very slow thriller. I'm gonna be intrigued as to how what I know is happening is kind of like explained for, I haven't figured that out yet, I haven't figured out like how that is possible necessarily so i'm gonna be intrigued to see that but like i'm not loving it as much as i was hoping to which is like devastating i will tell you i just listened to the first 30 pages whilst i was getting ready of um the nesting on audio and i loved it so that might be coming in clutch for us at the end but i really want to try and finish this this evening as well i've only got like 150 pages can you hear the rain we had a storm yesterday in the UK and it's like still kind of here. Like what the hell? Can you hear that? Anyway, um, I still want to try and finish this tonight. So hopefully I'll be checking in with you. Excuse me. The rain says I'm a main character. So <laughs> I finished it and I didn't love it. I think I'm going to give this one three stars. Oh my God. I feel so horrible. <laughs> I feel so mean. Here's the thing. It was pretty obvious what was going on throughout. So much so that I question, was it a twist? Or were you just supposed to know that that was what was happening the whole time? But then if it's not a twist, what's the point of the book? Like, what's the point in going through all of this if it's not for that reveal, which was so obvious the entire time? What was the reason? reason? What was the reason? reason? I will say for me, this is a three because I did really love like, nature in the book and the setting and like psychology behind everything in the book but it did just feel like the year of the witching but not as good i don't know some of the characters i really liked i really loved b i thought b was the like the top character in the book i thought she was amazing she is Kala's sister so she is like there's a husband and wife and she's the sister of the wife. Just her storyline, what she goes on throughout the book and her character development, I found very interesting. But at the end, she was kind of like, 
she petered out. She was kind of forgotten at the end, which pissed me off because I was like, she was the main one I was here for. I don't know. I don't really actually have many more words to explain to you why I haven't like why I didn't like this book. Other than that, I didn't feel like it ha enough happened. Like I didn't feel like it bought enough, and I felt like it was so so obvious what was happening the entire time. So I, yeah, I didn't love it. I liked it more than Rock Paper Scissors, but I still didn't love it. And I'm disappointed because I thought I was gonna absolutely like eat this book up. I thought I was gonna be like totally obsessed with it. But alas. <laughs> alas. <laughs> anyway, so now I'm going to carry on with the nesting. I'm only 30 pages in, so I don't really have any thoughts yet. Other than I am enjoying it the most out of all these books so far. Now, in order for Gabby to be equal with Aaron, i.e. for Gabby not to be last, this has to get four stars. If it gets more than four stars, Gabby will overtake Aaron. If it gets less than four stars, Gabby will be bottom of the leaderboard. So... <laughs> There's a lot resting on this book. Yeah, I'm enjoying it so far, uh, but I'm only 30 pages in. So I'm gonna go read some more and we'll see what I think when I'm actually a fair way into it. Hey, okay, so <laughs> I went away and I read the whole of the nesting because I don't feel very well. <laughs> want to speak on camera I still don't feel very well but this video needs to go up so here we are because I'm not very well at all I'm in a lot of pain <laughs> my description and analysis of this book may not be the best but um... I'm done with her I'm sorry is that too much okay yeah I'm done with her so I read the nesting essentially we're following Lexi who recently attempted shut up she recently attempted suicide. So that is a trigger you need to know right off the gate going to this book. Let me just say, it doesn't have much, you know, bearing to the rest of the book, but the people around Lexi in her life are fucking trash. Trash. Fucking trash. Fucking trash. This happens within the first, like, 40 pages of the book, if that. Yeah, 40 pages of the book. So like, this isn't a spoiler. Basically, her boyfriend breaks up with her, kicks her out like a couple months after this. She's homeless for like a couple nights. Fuck, finds out her best friend is like, can I live with you? And she's like, here's the thing. Uh, I'm moving in with your ex and we're together. And then, and then she has the nerve to like, she was like, okay, I'm gonna bring you loads of your stuff. So you can take, you have some of your stuff, but everything else I'm gonna give to the charity shop. Oh my God! <laughs> anyway, so Lexi is a kind of character where it's obviously framed as that kind of thriller character who doesn't have much tying her back outside of the perilous situation that she eventually finds herself in. So like these characters often have like, you know, they're, they're more likely to stay in these situations because they have less to lose is the kind of idea of this trope. And she's nannying for two sisters, two baby child children in Norway whose mother recently committed suicide um, for this architect. And things just start going weird. The darkness, the strangeness, the looming, the ooh, doo -doo, what's the truth, what's happening, is looming over the whole story. Firstly, I'm going on holiday on a cruise in the summer with my family, it's like a summer holiday, um, to the Norwegian fjords. And it was so cool to read about a book set in a setting. I kind of wish I had like read this on the cruise, because can you imagine like being in the middle of the Norwegian fjords and being like, oh my god, I'm reading, I'm reading the setting. Like, can you imagine? I wish I had done that, but... It was really fun. I've never read a book set in Norway before. It's very hard to describe what happens in this book. It's a very slow book. Now I listened predominantly to the audiobook was how I read this. And I really loved the audiobook. Our main character is Geordie and the narrator puts on a Geordie accent. She puts on like Norwegian accents for Norwegian characters. Does a really, really good job. I actually like couldn't really read this physically. I really enjoyed the audiobook though. I liked it. <laughs> Oh no, you can see it's going bad, you guys. Dear God, where did you go? I liked it, but I didn't love it. I, I enjoyed it, but the story just felt, it felt slow. And I feel like we needed to ramp the atmosphere up like one or two notches for how slow the book was. You could tell it was trying to do that. It was trying to give slow building atmosphere. But I needed a little bit more, just a little bit more to keep me entertained. And I, at, at the end, I felt like the resolutions were kind of like flat. I feel like the ending kind of fell flat to me. I didn't feel like there was many twists at the end. There wasn't really any twists. It just felt like everything kind of petered out into like a slow ending and if i don't mind a book being slow but i want the ending to be like a bit explosive but i bet you're wondering what i rated this book i bet you're wondering what i rate this book um <laughs> am i ready to tell you 
You naughty, naughty. You teasing me, you naughty, naughty. <laughs> as soon as I finish the book, I just feel like I'm going to forget about it immediately. It doesn't feel like it's going to have any bearing over me or any... Like, I'm going to look back on it in any kind of way. I feel like I'm just going to forget it immediately. So my rating is a 3.5. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Because you all know what that means. You're all shaking, crying, you know. Gabby's, like, shut the laptop lid. <laughs> like That means that Gabby is bottom on the leaderboard at 8.5. So half a point below Aaron. I'm so sorry. I did not see this going this way. So many of you recommended Gabby. I always thought me and Gabby had very similar reading tastes. I still think we do. I think this was just bad luck with the three books. It also means that we've done four episodes of this now and each time the person has got lower on the leaderboard. So good luck to whoever's next because you've got to break the cycle. I'm not having anything lower than an 8.5. I'm sorry, it's not happening. <laughs> That's the nesting. That's the end of this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry that this last clip, I didn't talk too much about this book, but listen, your girl's been going through it. I'm still going through it. I didn't want to record this but I hope you enjoyed it let me know what you thought let me know if you thought me and Gabby would have similar more similar reading taste in this let me know if you're shocked I'm shocked you're shocked you're shocked anyway um <laughs> if you've gone to the end of this video comment is there like a stag deer something emoji something along those lines woodland animal emoji comment that down below if you've gotten to the end thank you so much for always watching and I'll see you very soon in another video bye <laughs>